For Krima Media's policy, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst, Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled, Danger Signals as SABC Victimizes Head of News Division, Pati Mahopeni. Welcome, Professor. Thank you very much. You have now written two articles on the SABC and the dismissal of Pati Mahopeni. So why is this such an important issue for you? I'm not an expert on the SABC, but I see what has happened as part of the problem of so-called renewal of the ANC and of democracy in South Africa, that you see something moving in a positive direction uh, with the SABC uh, regaining credibility only to have the ANC interfere and compromise some of the leadership of the SABC and lead to the undermining of the gains that have been made with the increased viewership and listenership and a general greater interest in SABC coverage. And they made Mahopeni the uh, full person for this, uh, for what was not uh, her, her issue just to get rid of her because she wasn't prepared to uh, subordinate the news processes to some demands of the ANC. And you suggest that the charges against Mahopeni in the disciplinary hearing were not the real reasons for her facing a disciplinary tribunal. Why is this so? Well, she didn't previously have tensions, as far as I'm aware, with the CEO and the board chair. But during the election campaign, they made this request to have an unscheduled interview with Cyril Ramaphosa uh, in Limpopo. Now, the SABC had protocols for treating all parties fairly, and Pule Mabe, the ANC spokesperson, knew these protocols, but he didn't ask her. He went via the CEO, and the CEO put pressure on her to have this interview. And she said if she did that, it would be undermining transparency and all the ways in which the SABC had agreed in their code of conduct and their ways of managing news, to which the CEO was a party. They still put pressure on her. And the board chair even went so far as to say, this is the last leg of the campaign. Now, the campaign of the ANC has got nothing to do with news gathering. And I think what they would have wanted to charge her with is not airing the interview because she didn't let it happen. But instead, they brought a charge over uh, the SABC airing uh, an interdicted program. There was a program of special assignment and a court interdict had been issued saying it couldn't be aired. Now, the news department people who load the programs, they provided them with a substitute program, something that had been aired before, to come in place of the interdicted program. An error was made in the loading process, and they aired the program, which was illegal to air again, because it had been interdicted. Now, it was a completely separate department from the news department, because our uh, the news department can't load programs. It's done by the video and entertainment division, I think it's called. And consequently, they knew when they brought charges against her that she did not have any uh, culpability for this thing being aired, but they wanted to punish her for disobeying uh, what they saw as instructions from them. So that was the, the Hearing of the program that was heard in the disciplinary hearing was not the real reason why they wanted to charge her, but there wasn't a charge that you could bring for not giving preference to the ANC. And why ought Mahopen need to have not been held accountable for the airing of an interdicted episode of special assignment which originated in the news department, which she hid it? Well, it originated in the news department 
And if she had not taken all steps that the news department could take, then she would have been liable for charges. And the chair of the disciplinary hearing, Advocate Kassim, said, someone has got to take the rap, and he accused her of passing the buck to the people who were in programming. But in fact, programming were the people, only people who could load the programs, not, didn't fall under the authority of Magopeni. She has a lot of authority, but that authority is in the news department. So there was no basis for charging her with that. And Kasim did not hear evidence on that. And there was not an investigation. Procedurally, the disciplinary code demands an investigation before you bring charges. They held no investigation. If there had been an investigation, they would have found who uh, ought to bear responsibility and to have decided whether or not to charge such a person. And lastly, Raymond, from what you say, a lot of the conflict within the SABC started with irregular requests and then complaints from the ANC. So are you correct to blame the ANC senior officials? Should the ANC not bear responsibility? Well, I think uh, that the ANC should bear a lot of responsibility. There's an SABC problem of irregular charging and later dismissal of Michael Penny. However, uh, if the ANC is the leader of society and thinks beyond the needs of the ANC, the president of the ANC and other officials should have restrained Mbalula and Jesse Duarte when they attacked Penny and the news division generally claiming that they were decampaigning the ANC and that they were acting as an opposition party. Now that sort of thing undermines all the efforts to give credibility to the SABC in the present period. And if the ANC had the interests of the country as a whole at heart, they would have recognized that it's in the interests of the ANC as well as, and the, obviously the country as a whole, to have an independent judiciary and also have an independent SABC. But they didn't say a word about what Mbalula and Jesse Duarte did, nor did they say a word about Pule Mabe uh, pressurizing. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Prima Media's policy about danger signals as SABC victimizes head of news division, Patiswa Mahopeni.